The yeast, of course, are one type. We, we discussed two gen genera of yeast. And uh, then we started on the mycelium, which are the dermatophytes. And the dermatophytes are sort of a class by themselves. They're not life-threatening diseases. They're mycelial only, no, no conversion to them. And now I'm going to discuss a bunch of diseases that are uh, caused by fungi that are mycelial form only. They're abundant all over uh, in the soil, in your vegetable bin, on your desk. Uh, and we're going to discuss these four diseases. The most important of these that we see here in the United States today are mucormycosis and aspergillosis. And we'll discuss those a little more. The chromomycosis usually occur more commonly in warmer climates, like South Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, and in the Latin American countries and Africa. It's a chronic localized infection in the subcutaneous species, uh, tissues. And several species are dermatiaceous. Dermatiaceous means they're black. They have a black pigment in the fungus itself that makes it uh, easy to visualize. These are, I don't expect you to remember these names, but if you run into them, you, you may re hit your recall button. Uh, but there are three main species that cause chromoblastomycosis. And they're all in the soil. Uh, they're in nature all over the place. So the reason we don't see too many in the U.S. is because most of the people are barefoot and they'll get stuck in, uh, with something, a little trauma to the foot, and that inoculates the organism. We don't go barefoot much anymore. Soil and decaying vegetation. And this is a nice diagram I swiped from a book. Uh, some friend of mine had this drawn. It's the thorn entering the skin. And I'm going to show you some pictures that demonstrate this a little bit more. And so you get penetration. That's why we don't see it too much in the U.S. This is a case of chromoblastomycosis from uh, um, Guatemala. And you see all those lesions. Again, these are hospital pictures. So these patients are pretty well under therapy at this point. I don't have any real good gory ones from the beginning. But this disease... He's probably had this five, ten years. And without treatment, they will uh, usually wind up amputation. Here's one. Again, these are mostly healing now because they're in the hospital. But you see all the deep pigmented area? And you can see the last little lesions here. And these are what we call eumycotic, EU. What does EU mean? True, true, true fungi, eumycotic lesions. Remember yesterday we talked about actinomycotic lesions. Okay, but also they get secondary bacterial infections, so they have to be treated with antibiotics as well as antimycotics. Now, this is an interesting case. Uh, to get you oriented, this is an arm. Uh, this patient had this lesion. This patient was from North Augusta, right on the border of South Carolina. And this patient had this lesion, and I'm talking about 1950s. Amphotericin B was new then. So the local physician said, ah, this is a uh, subcutaneous infection with a fungus, and we'll treat it with amphotericin B, which was correct. But it was the early days of amphotericin B, and he took the amphotericin and infiltrated under the lesion with amphotericin all around. Well, wherever he went in with the needle, a new lesion started because what he did was get in there to the lesion, and as he's pulling out the needle, it's spreading the disease, just like the thorn. Remember I showed you the thorn? So that was happening here. And then we saw her at the Medical College of Georgia, and, and they just... Uh, 
cut out that small piece. Surgical excision is, is what it took to clean that. Okay, here's an important part. Sclerotic bodies. These are bodies formed by these mycelium in the tissue. And this is a result, you were asking about host defenses back there. This is a result of the uh, host defenses working on the organism and they cause it to form this body. What tissue? Histology, skin, the squamous cells, columnar, and these are sclerotic bodies. All this is an infected area. These are sclerotic, and I'll show you a better picture here. Now you see this one, you can see a division. They divide up the center in two. They're dark brown staining. That was the word dermatiaceous. You remember that? Dermatiaceous. This is not the, uh, this is just plain H&E. There's no black stain in here like the GMS stain. Okay, sclerotic bodies. Uh, this is just to give you an example. I don't expect you to remember any of these. There are many, many species of these, and we identify them by how these uh, conidia are formed, and there's many varieties of them, and that's how you identify species. This is a real example one. You can see these are dermatiaceous. You see the black pigment. You can see that they're septate, and they have the uh, conidia on them. Again, all I want you to remember out of this is you use the conidial formation for identification. They think the melanin produced by these organisms. Melanin has been shown in several fungus, fungi now to probably be the, uh, the uh, virulence factor in them. And it's not 100% proven, but that's what most people are working on now. The organisms occur worldwide. And depending on the lesion, pus or biopsy material. Excision. Some of them are getting recognized earlier, and so you can avoid excision. Terbinafin and itraconazole are the drugs of choice right now. Not great, but they're doing pretty well. No serological tests. It's just going to depend on your own uh, diagnostic human to make these diagnoses and what tissues you send to the laboratory and uh, your index, high index of suspicion. Okay, that's all for the chromo. A mycetoma is tumefaction, a tumor, produces granules. Remember we saw mycetoma with the streptomyces, which are really bacteria, similar. So we get granule formation. Now these are wonderful because they'll produce, each species produces its own granule. It has to do with the, the different colors. Some have white, red, black, yellow, and they're specific. And then the walls are maybe rough or smooth, and all these are characteristics to identify species. Uh, they almost always form draining sinus tracts. Here's one. Costa Rica, you can see all these. Again, this is well into the healing process, but you can see where all these abscesses were draining lesions, and he's responding to therapy. Uh, these are the agents. Again, I don't expect you to remember these names, but uh, you might get some recall at some time. Mycetoma agents. They occur in the warm climates, so you can expect to see them here. They're from the soil, and again, it's the same soil penetration for inoculation as a portal of entry. Material, pus, and tissue. Now you've got to remember, all these are probably going to, if they've been around a while, you're going to have bacterial secondary infections to them. We identify them by the colonial morphology, that is, how they grow, the type of mycelium, the uh, color of the mycelium, and the conidia formation that I showed you a little while ago, the granules, the color, the size, the shape, 
and the texture, and then biochemical reactions by letting them grow on different media with different biochemicals. I don't expect you to remember all that, though. This is a dematiaceous colony. Most of them are dematiaceous, black pigment, and they're slow growing. This probably took a uh, couple of weeks to get to that size. And to give you an idea of size, this is probably in a petri plate that's that big. That's probably about an inch in diameter. Only for one of them do we have a serological test called Sudalasheria. It's an immune diffusion test. And uh, it's a very interesting test. I don't know whether I... I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. Uh, terbenefin and etraconazole, both newer drugs and they're working well. Now, this is, uh, well, it's 10 2. Why don't we just cut off on this one then, and we'll come back at 10 2 and pick up what eucromycosis.